What's up guys? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I want to talk to you about something and then show you something pretty cool. Uh, but I want to talk to you about concealing items. So, you know, maybe you're a concealed carrier, uh, a, a pistol. Uh, maybe you're hiding gold in your house. Maybe you're hiding uh, the title to your car or porn or drugs or whatever. You know, lots of reasons to conceal stuff. Um, but, you know, there's two things that you really need to conceal something really well. The first thing you need is an item that actually does a good job of concealing something. So you need it to look like something else, uh, which isn't the hardest thing in the world to do. And a lot of times you can actually just take something that actually is functional for something and just gut it and, and use it uh, to conceal something. But then the second thing that you need is it to be unique enough that people don't know that it's used for concealing things. You know, and this is one of the reasons that I've actually never bought anything from Tactical Walls. Great company, uh, their products look great. I would love to try them out. But one of the problems with that is, is that they're kind of the big game in town on concealment devices. And so, you know, when I see full length wall mirrors or uh, floating shelves or oversized wall clocks, ironically, the only thing I think about is Tactical Walls. And I actually think, when I see those things, I wonder if they're concealment devices. So part of the, the catch-22 about producing concealment devices is that, you know, they have to look good, they have to be really good, and then you actually have to be completely anonymous from a company perspective, or you have to have all your products varied so much that no one would ever recognize it as a concealment device. So that's always one of the problems I've had uh, about that. And, and then kind of a uh, slightly different problem that I've had is I showed you once uh, about a concealment lamp and it was a pretty good device. Um, you know, I had some uh, details that I think could have been improved on, but you know, one of the problems is as at $100, you know, it sticks out like a sore thumb because it doesn't match any of my other lamps. So if I really wanted to use it to conceal something, I'd have to buy three or four or five matching lamps, which would all be concealable devices, but it, I don't want to spend that much money on a lamp, especially if I'm only going to use one as a concealment device. So unless you really can have like one standalone lamp, um, that, that's always a tough thing to do. You know, it'd be nice if you could actually buy one that had a concealed uh, compartment in it and then buy matching lamps that didn't at a cheaper price point. So the solution to that problem is you've got to buy a one-off that has to do the job, which can be really hard to find and can be very expensive but I think I have come up with a solution. So let's check it out. All right, guys, so my solution to this problem was I actually found a company called Reynolds Concealed Creations out of Arizona, and uh, the proprietor there, Michael, is a crafty woodworking guy, and I found uh, on his website and Facebook page that he makes a couple of things that are meant for concealment. We will talk about this. This is actually called a concealment beam, and we're gonna look at that, but uh, check out a different video to kind of go into depth there. Uh, but this is what he does. But I actually gave him a call because he does custom things. And right here, what we have is a one of a kind wooden concealment clock. And let me tell you how this came to be and then we'll take a look at it. Um, the reason this came to be and why I think it's really interesting is that he will build a custom concealment piece for you. And in this case, we didn't have any ideas about what it, we wanted to build and in fact he called me and we kind of kicked around some ideas I had some basic uh, needs that I needed to fill one I wanted something that was con concealed um, and had some enough space to do you know say a, a firearm or candy or boys life magazine whatever and so we kind of talked about what it needed to to be able to hide we also talked about uh, where we go like for me and I think a lot of people you know, you want something on your nightstand. And if you want something on your nightstand, you're gonna to have to go to something like a concealment lamp. Problem with that is, is if you have lamps on another nightstand, those really need to match, otherwise they're not gonna really be concealed, which is that problem I talked to you about. Now, a lot of nightstands have clocks or alarm clocks or chargers or whatever. So that, there was an opportunity to make a clock because that wouldn't be out of the ordinary. Now, there are some concealment clocks out there, but they're mostly for like mantles and they're kind of more formal looking clocks. And so they don't look like they would really 
fit on a nightstand. And so we kind of talked about that, that I, that I think we kind of narrowed it down. I wanted something that looked like a clock. It didn't look like just a mantle clock. It wouldn't look totally out of place on a nightstand. Um, and then I also had some requirements in that I wanted it to be easy to access. I didn't want to have to fumble with RFID or magnetic latches or anything like that. You know, uh, in my opinion, the point of concealment devices is that they're readily available to you. The, the, the security is that nobody knows what they hide or that they are hiding anything. And so what I wanted was the ability for it to kind of hold its shape so that someone didn't just stumble on something, but that if I needed something, uh, I didn't have to go find a, a magnet or a key or anything like that. If I needed something at the ready, I could have it. So what he came up with was this clock. And in fact, it was a few days later, he had some ideas. He sent me some sketches. We communicated via text. I really gave him kind of free reign on uh, the design and he built this. And now he did ask me for some dimensions inside, which I gave to him. Uh, because I had some ideas of what I wanted to put in it or what I wanted to be able to put in it. And then he made this. Now, a couple things. When you make something custom, it's probably going to take a little while. So you definitely have to be patient with it. Um, and there are, they, it isn't really going to be cheap either. You know, a custom uh, piece is going to run you a little money because someone's doing something they've never done before, potentially. Um, but I would also say that I think you get a lot from Reynolds Concealed Creations for not a lot of money. And uh, I don't remember exactly what I paid for these. I paid for them probably months ago. But the concealment beam was maybe about $100 and the clock ran me about $100. They're not unaffordable. Um, so that's the good thing. So if you have some time, you have an idea about what you want, uh, you can certainly find someone to help you build it. So that's my story. Now let's take a look at the clock itself. Now you can see here, it's triangular. And obviously it's big enough that uh, you know, it's got inside of it a, a cavity where I can put things. What he did here, as I kind of took a look at it, is he took, he has a quartz movement, and in fact it looks like he painted the hand so that it has a nice contrast on the clock as well, um, and then uh, drilled a hole and mounted that in there so it's a true working clock. Runs on a double A battery, which I have not installed here, but you can install it by just putting it in the movement, which is on the back side of this panel. Now, that's pretty cool. So it's actually a real working clock. So if people were to look at it, they'd say, that's great, it's a clock. And it's kind of in a shape that doesn't look like just a mantle clock. It certainly could be on a mantle, but it doesn't look like kind of those ornate, curvy mantle clocks uh, by itself. The other thing is, he kind of picked the stain. I gave him carte blanche on that. It's really kind of nice, dark wood, like kind of oak wood uh, finish and um, varnish on it looks good it, it, it's kind of hot off the presses and then I, I can still smell it it's it's been curing out uh, in the sun for a, um, a day or so here as I unpacked it but um, you know it really nice looking piece I'll give you some close-ups on this but uh, I think just really really nice now obviously this clock and this beam are different finishes so you can obviously request a finish in anything you know any color or sheen that you like now the last thing I want to show you on this clock is the front. And what I asked him to do here is what he calls like an electric burning process. And you can certainly request it or decline it. Um, but it's something obviously it's on this beam too. And this is kind of something that I've only seen him do. And what they do is they put some uh, electrodes basically in two places and then run high electrical charges and the electricity kind of flows through the wood and burns these little patterns in here. Kind of looks a little bit like a burl wood vein or something like that. Like little canyons. It's kind of an interesting process. He has some videos of it on his website and it just adds some texture and adds some depth. It's something kind of unique. They almost look like little lightning bolts. They, he can even color fill these. They obviously create some little, little valleys in the wood itself but you can color fill them, you could fill them with something else, but it just adds an interesting texture and he's really the only one that I've seen that uh, does that to the wood. So that's, pretty, that's a pretty cool little feature too, um, and pretty nice effect. But this looks great and it's kind of dark and a little bit subtle and kind of blends into things I think too. Obviously wooden base here, and what he did for me, is, and what you'll be able to see here, is that it actually took me a minute to figure out how to open this up. 
as I had requested, no magnetic locks or RFID or latches or anything. But right here on the back, there's a little dowel that's sticking out. And what I figured out, because I couldn't actually figure out how to take it apart at first when I got it, is that the dowel is holding this top piece down. And so what you do is you just take out this little dowel pin and it just pulls right out like that. Um, and now the top piece will pull away. And what I like about that is it kind of prevents the thing from just falling apart or falling open when you move it around. So I don't have to really worry too much about people just inadvertently disassembling my clock and finding all of my Star Wars trading cards. But what uh, it does do is make it really easy for me to access stuff very, very quickly if I need to. And then particularly if this is something that's going in your nightstand or maybe it's for emergencies uh, in your office, you wanna be able to access things quickly and especially under duress or stress, you know, it's gonna be hard to fumble with things. So uh, you just pull that out and now the whole top piece here just lifts straight up. Now this is where I found a lot of cool things that he did and you know why building a custom uh, product is so difficult. If I flip it around here, what you can see is, you know, it's kind of like a stash lamp in some ways that uh, there's this inner frame that ha houses the cavity, ha houses anything that you want to put in it, but you'll see that there's a notch cut out here on the top and that's because, you know, as you're r and d things, you have this clock movement inside that has to clear a piece here. So it can't be a super tight fit. You need a little bit of space so that that movement, the clock movement can slide down in place. So that's uh, one of the nice things that I'm sure he discovered along the way, but it's great. You know, the, the movement clears that and it doesn't affect the concealability at all. So it's a nice, it's a nice design overall where I'm not taking apart anything to get things out. And in fact, this is really nice because even the kind of the byproduct of the way it's designed is that it kind of works a little bit like its own locking mechanism in that the two triangles set inside each other so everything aligns on its own. All right, so inside here we have kind of another wood triangle. I asked for foam, he actually uh, offered some different solutions like pegs or things like that, uh, a specific cutout. You know, I wanted it flexible. I don't know what I'm gonna keep in here. I kind of just wanted flexibility and probably nothing for a while, you know, because um, I just mostly eat my candy. But if I wanna hide it, I'll, I'll put it in there. And I have that safe, which I did another video on for my junior mints. Um, so we put a piece of foam in here uh, on the back so you can have things in here without rattling around. You can also replace this should you, if you're using a firearm and you end up replacing that, you could kind of easily take out this foam and replace it with something that's gonna be a, a cutout specifically for it. But it's, it's really, really nice. Now, how big is it? Well, it's not big enough for a full-size service pistol, okay? Um, so I tried it with my VP9 and that wasn't part of my requirement. But I do have my Smith & Wesson Shield 9mm here. And this is what uh, I provided the measurements to him on. And as you can see, this has no problem fitting in there. Not only could I fit it in a number of ways, that is safety checked by the way, but I don't think uh, I need to prove it to you. Um, so you could absolutely put this in a number of ways that would be secure, completely concealed, etc., etc. Now one of the things that you've got to remember is that the clock movement is going to come down in the center here. So you need to you're going to have to put it somehow in a way that does not interfere with the clock movement okay so the shield is just about the biggest one that you're going to well in this case for this particular um for this particular clock the shield is about the biggest firearm that you would put in there you know something like a 380 or something would probably even be easier but the way you orient it is going to depend on where the movement on the clock is, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and depending on how you arrange it, you could even potentially um, have another magazine or something in there too. So it's just one of those things, what I ended up doing is tracing this on a piece of paper and then kind of giving him some dimensions in order to make sure that the sucker fit. So you just kind of keep that in mind. Now, this thing certainly isn't just for firearms, in effect, you know, I don't know that I'd use it for one. But it would be really good for these. These things tend to disappear. You know, I know a lot of people have ethics and morals, but when it comes to helping themselves to candies around the house, 
pretty much uh, nobody has any qualms about taking candy that doesn't belong to them. And then again, the top would fit right over there. Or maybe you have some herbs, you know, some, uh, some plants you grow. You could certainly put those in here. This is chrysanthemum. No problem, I could fit a lot of chrysanthemum in there. Cash or, you know, I know uh, the other thing that a lot of people have is a autographed photo of Marina Sirtis. Now, it's not gonna fit without rolling it up. And so you just have to keep that in mind. And if you want something a little bigger for, for those, that's where the concealment beam comes into place. You can certainly order these in different sizes. Um, but uh, you know, your, your true valuable documents could be in something like this as well. So I'm pretty excited about it. I think this is gonna be pretty cool. And like I said, the reason that this works uh, for concealment, one is because obviously it has a space for it, so it physically works. But then more importantly, nobody's ever seen it before, you know? I could have easily deprived you of the video of this clock and truly had perfect security, but I wanna show it to you because I think it's important that if you want real, something that's really, truly a concealment device, you need to get it one off so that nobody has any idea that it does anything. The surprise element is kind of what's the most important. But there it is, Reynolds Concealed Creations. Good value, good craftsmanship does a job and you can have something that's one of a kind so check it out peter rompanda out